Welcome to Arkham Tech at Arkham Pilsen. Today, I have the pleasure to invite Annick Bureau, who is in Paris. Her lecture will be on art and the Minitel in France in the 80s, a media archaeology of pre-web medium. Annick Bureau is a professor and an art critic. She has been following the evolution of art, technology, and communication since the beginning, and particularly of the aesthetics of communication. Annick, please, it's your turn. Hi. Hello. You have, you, you have the floor, or better, the screen. Thank you, Nathan. Um, so I'm really happy to... Well, I was about to say to be with you, but um, yeah, somehow to be with you. So Nathan asked me uh, first to introduce myself, um, what I'm doing, and how I came to, to do what I do. Um, and this is actually fully related to the topic I'm going to, to talk about today, uh, which is this Art of Mini and Minitel um, story from the 80s. And today our situation is really this um, remote mediated uh, seminars happening in the virtual space of networks that Nathan is organizing. So um, this is really on, on, the, um, on the core of uh, what we are talking about. Um, so I'm going to share a little bit my screen with you. That is this. Very well, we see your screen. Thanks. Yes. So, um, for me, before again going into my topic or art and the mini tale, it all started uh, 30 years ago uh, by my encounter with uh, the group and artist of Art of Communication on the one side, and here you have a book that has been published at that time and the journal Leonardo on the other side. Uh, among the artists in this loose movement of art and communication where people you have um, encountered already and some of them will take part in the, um, in the lectures um, a little bit later. Um, I'm trying to do too many things at the same time. Yeah, uh, so people like uh, Fred Forrest, of course, but also Olivier Aubert, uh, Tom Klinkhofstein, but also Roy Ascot, Bob Adrian, and theoreticians such as Mario Costa, the, um, and also Derek de Kerkhoff, who already spoke uh, into your, your conferences, and of course with Nathan Karchmar. And it was also um, a time uh, when the journal um, Leonardo um, oh, it's difficult to talk and share the screen at the same time. <laughs> uh, where the journal uh, Leonardo published uh, this uh, issue about art and interactive telecommunication under Roy Ascot and uh, Karl uh, Loeffler. Um, so, uh, this was the time in the 80s when we were talking about art and of communication. Some 20 years later, uh, in 2002, net art was uh, blossoming, and for me there was a direct relation, uh, a, a conceptual relation between the ideas and projects that had been done under the art and communication movement, and that the net artists uh, were experimenting and proposing at that time. And, um, proposing a contextualization, discussing the similarities and ruptures, um, in short, building a historical bridge uh, was something that I thought important, and I edited this book, Connexion à Réseau Média, together with uh, Nathalie Magnon. Um, and this is a collection of essays published in French that goes from La Radia, the Futurist Manifesto, to Tactical Media, which was uh, the hot uh, topic at that time. 
The same year, I had the great uh, opportunity uh, and the great pleasure to co-organize with uh, Fred Forrest and Mario Costa the eighth edition of uh, Art Media 8, the conference that they initiated in the mid-80s. Uh, and from Art of Communication to Net Art, uh, from aesthetic of communication to net art was the topic of this conference. Um, and you can find, this might be interesting for you, you can find the proceedings of this conference on the Leonardo Olatz website. Um, and you see, you have all those uh, texts that are here. We have Nathan Karshma here. Uh, Pierre Lévy, um, really a lot of people, Nicolas Reeves, which uh, whom I think you uh, might have met also. Uh, some of the texts are in French, but a lot of the texts are, are in English, and you see, I mean, if you just click on the, on the link, you find all the texts, and this is very interesting as a historical uh, component. Uh, why am I not uh, okay here? Um, so um, I just mentioned uh, three minutes ago Leonardo, and now that those um, uh, proceedings were on the Leonardo Olatz website, and I think it's uh, time to introduce you a little bit more to Leonardo, as Nathan asked me. To, to do it, and also as it's a, a resource that can be interesting uh, for you. So Leonardo is a journal, and it's the oldest journal dedicated to art, science, and technology. And it was founded in '68 by that man, who is Frank Molina, who was Frank Molina, and who was both a scientist and an artist. As a scientist, he was a rocket engineer, and he co-founded. Um, a very prestigious uh, place that you all know, uh, which is JPL, Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California, and they are the, this is the place which is running the robot on Mars. But it was also, he became also an artist in France in the 80s, a kinetic artist. Here you have one of his uh, kinetic work, and he founded the journal Leonardo. So today, what is Leonardo? Well, Leonardo is a whole, uh, from, from the original journal, it's a whole field and a whole bunch of uh, activities. Uh, it spans from printed publications, and we have among uh, this book series um, with um, a very famous book, uh, that is Language of New Media by Lev Manovich, but all sorts of books. We have also a series of online publication of which Leonardo Olatz is part of it, and this is what I'm running. This is the French Leonardo branch, and we have also recently launched podcast. So if you go very briefly on the Leonardo Olatz uh, website here, uh, which is the main interface, you can go to or my glasses to a book series where you can see how many books we have published, um, all in English for you to, to read. Uh, we have also the Leonardo uh, music, music Journal, and again, all those um, uh, online uh, websites, and here is the main page uh, for the Leonardo Olatz website. Our current project is Trust Me, I'm an Artist, which is dealing with art, biotechnologies, biomedicine, ethics, um, and we have, as I mentioned, also the different podcasts. Oops. So, now I'm going to enter into the media archaeology of a previous pre-web medium, which is this uh, story about art and the Minitel, and which is in continuity um, with this art of communication story that I started to, to tell you um, 
today. Um, and I chose this, uh, this topic because it echoes with some of today's issues and questions uh, from the Matlowanian situation in which this conference, my talk, is taking place where we are, uh, you know, uh, on a virtual um, place, a virtual plaza of a global village, but also all the issues around the social networks, uh, e-publishing, uh, new communication devices and protocols that are blossoming today. And I took this topic also because uh, it's becoming um, trendy again. And it is uh, revisited by uh, what is called the media archaeology approach, uh, which is another step uh, from history. If in 2002 we, I did this book, uh, Art Connexion Media, and collaborated to the conference Art Media 8, which was history going from art of communication to net, net art, Today, there is this other layer of archaeology, media archaeology, that has been theorized by, among others, Erki Urtamo, Siegfried Zielinski, and that is bringing back to life or digging into um, material to find, uh, to reactivate, uh, when possible, works from the past, from the recent past, uh, that are no longer existing. And it's very interesting to see that on this uh, special issue of MCD, which is a French uh, magazine, they have taken as a picture, uh, this picture from my article on Minitel uh, for the cover uh, and not something else. So Minitel is again very trendy in France. And here, uh, you have what the Laboratoire Paman from the art school in Avignon is doing. That is, they have recreated a Minitel uh, server. Of course, it's no longer online and it's only local, but the Minitel again is trendy and fashion. Um, so, what is the Minitel? I'm pretty sure that none of you have any idea or any clue uh, what that, that is. Um, this was, because it's no longer existing, but you have to see how it looks. It was this kind of square box, kind of 20 centimeters square box. It took different forms that you can see here, different models. Like today you would have the iPhone 6, uh, towards the Samsung Galaxy number, whatever. Um, the most common was this one, and it was in black and white. So now I'm going to tell you a little bit of details and technical details about the mini shell, but uh, as it might be a bit difficult, I'm going to switch to my face again so that you are not lost um, in, without any human person to talk about it. Um, so, um, the Minitel is of course no longer existing. What it was, it was an integrated, crude computer terminal. Um, and this idea of computer terminal is very, very important. It means that there was little storage on the device itself, but you would use it to access files and information that were actually stored somewhere on a remote computer elsewhere. And it's interesting because think of today cloud, where slowly uh, your computer being uh, the desktop or your smartphone, because a smartphone is also um, a small a portable pocket computer, is turning uh, slowly more and more into um, a terminal and uh, to access files stored uh, somewhere else in the cloud. So the Minitel was at, it was a combination of um, communication, telecommunication, and computer. It was extremely slow. The modem, if it says something to someone, was 1,200 volts. That, that was amazingly slow. Um, the screen was um, rather small and not as um, um, 
easygoing and friendly than your uh, cell phone screen. It was 9 inch, 25 lines of 40 columns. It was really small. Uh, it wasn't black and white. The programming was done in color on the backstage, but the audience would see it in black and white until the very end where they had also colored screen. Um, so you had letters, but where um, it was mostly um, letters. Um, but you had the possibility to have flickering and video inversions of the text that was displayed on the screen. And the time of displaying was also something you could play with, the dynamic uh, writing. Programming required skills, and this is important for you. I suppose you are rather young. Because today you, you can publish online on the internet, just boom, boom. You have a lot of softwares that are very easy to use. At that time, you really needed programming skills to be able to uh, do something. And the keyboard was very small, and the keys were very hard. This is important, too, because it creates the way the audience would act. Uh, with it. Um, oops. So, the Minitel is the trademark of the French uh, video text system, that is a computer plus the telecom. Um, it was born from a governmental decision and it was uh, born for industrial and economical reasons. And the choice that France made at that time that it was for a white public that is a cheap terminal in black and white, the square box that I showed you. Uh, that was given for free to everyone, but we would pay for the communication costs. And at that time, it was rather uh, expensive. So what is funny is that today to dead media, it was deactivated in 2012. But what is interesting is at the beginning, and for a very short period of time, between 83 and 94, but mostly between 83 and 86, artists created works uh, with, for that device. And what is interesting, too, is that all the works, with a few excep exceptions, sorry, have uh, disappeared. So we are left with nothing but uh, bits and pieces of papers and the memory of people. So now I am going to show you a few examples of So you should see my screen, yes. Yes, a few examples of uh, the works that were created and how they can relate with today um, issues, discussion, creation that we are discussing uh, about the internet, social networks, and, and, uh, and so on and, and so forth. So this was, Araxe was in between an online magazine and an online gallery founded by Orlan, Frédéric Devolet, and Frédéric Martin. Um, so um, this is in, in, interesting because we, we, when we discuss today e-publishing and uh, e-curation and e-exhibition, how do we do a publication online, how do we do how do we move, for instance, a journal like Leonardo that was in paper and an academic journal toward uh, electronic publishing? And how do we do that? How do we organize uh, all this? But if we think also about all the MOOC and the teaching online, and if we think about all the galleries and exhibiting works online, Araxe was exactly uh, uh, a first example of um, a magazine slash gallery where artworks were available online for people to access from their home. Uh, there were three categories of project, visual arts, they were the majority, literature, a few, music, some. And it's worth, it is important and it's worth noticing that the Minitel was a medium without sound. But they still thought that it could be interesting to have 
uh, some projects, and we'll see what kind of project it was. For each artist, it included a text by the artist, a text by a critic chosen by the artist, and of course the artworks, the artwork itself. So, this was one of the artwork uh, created for the Minitel, and this is what Orlon uh, did. It was based on Saint Orlon that she was working on at that time. And what you see here is six um, pictures, six photographs of a screen, one, two, three, four, five, six, of how it was appearing on the screen. Uh, at that time, but of course you would see only one image at a time, and then you would press a, but, uh, a key on, on the screen, you would have next written, and you would press the key next, and you would get the next screen, and so on and so forth. And the, the image would appear slowly, uh, almost one pixel at a time, on, on, on your screen. Um, the word that is at, at the tit of a, of a breast is the word art, art. and uh, here is written old and new. And what is interesting is that uh, this work exists also as uh, frozen, so to speak, on long boxes. Uh, so it's one of the work that remains in, a, in another form, in another format. Another work created uh, with Araxe is the work, one work done by Ben. Ben is a very uh, important French artist like uh, Orlan. Uh, and what Ben did is what Ben normally does, so to speak. So he wrote sentences on, on the Minitel. Uh, so this says, this is a screen sign Ben, uh, action for a Minitel, cover it with a white sheet, call me. And this is interesting because also in his, uh, in his uh, statement here that you cannot read, but I'm telling you, um, he says that I'm dreaming of a Minitel with which we would send a message in French and it would be received in Bantu at Tombuktu and in Basque, in the Basque country. Uh, ben uh, was dreaming, and mind you, uh, think about Google Translate, of course, um, sometimes it's come as garbage, but still, um, uh, we are moving toward uh, me talking to you in French and you listening to me in Czech or in English or in German or, or in whatever language you talk. You, you speak. Uh, what is interesting is that Ben was both interested by the device that was connecting people, but, but and this new possibility of connecting people. What the, again, what the social networks are doing today, what the internet is doing today, that we're using with Hangout, that we use with uh, with Skype. But it was also rather critical, and um, that is how do you connect people through the technology. How does it make a social, uh, how does it create a social, a human fabric, and uh, not only a device to, to split uh, people? Here, an example of uh, music, so to speak, created with uh, the Minitel or for our Axe, which is Franck Royon Le May. And what they did was graphical score. So you had here again different uh, pictures of a screen that were taken at that time and are left and that I have put together on the same page and maybe you can see here you have the, um, the graphical score and here you can see uh, what you have to do so this a triangle means um, uh, a specific kind of sound this means uh, vibration glissando, and so if you were someone at home, you could somehow perform uh, the score yourself. But um, it was also used as um, as a, as a score in front of 
with real musicians uh, and a conductor we used it as a, as a score and now I'm going back again on for you to see my face yes uh, to um, sum up a little bit what the goals of Araxi were um, so let's, let's um, try to figure out for you uh, what the minitel was and how it was so in the French homes um, you would have this little crude stupid or not not stupid but this crude box um, and through this box you could access information online of which um, somewhere artworks may uh, and for Araxi and the people who promoted Araxi uh, there were several ideas and several uh, goals one was to challenge the medium and its economical environment the Minitel was not built to create art and to propose art and it was not built to connect people it was built to deliver information um, um, administrative information uh, the telephone book was there but also you could buy your train ticket for instance or uh, you could look at the results of the, of the exams and, and things like that but it was not meant for culture and for the people of Araxe it was we're not going to leave this new cutting edge technology only to the business only to the economical world but we are also we need to propose some uh, cultural content, some artistic content because this is a device that is important in the way people communicate and exchange so it was to be at the forefront of innovation uh, another point was what it was to reach an audience directly at home and this was the dream of democratization and this dream of, of um, an art, culture that could reach its audience directly beyond uh, the traditional uh, intermediary that are the museums, the galleries, uh, the curators, the art critics was very important. The idea was really uh, we artists can deliver our works directly to the people in their home and they can enjoy that and it's a way to really go uh, beyond the filters that the museum and curators and art public are and this was also very true with the internet when the internet started and started to be more and more popular and it's exactly the same discourse that we have today also with social networks and um, e-publication and what you do, it fails it failed and it fails I believe it fails to today with the internet and the last idea was to find a new business model so to speak for art that is to earn money uh, directly um, from the people because uh, again the Minitel itself was free but the connections were paying so you would pay um, oops I'm seeing my, my watch is dead and I'm seeing that Tom is flying so I have to rush a little bit uh, so you would pay the communication costs. Part of it would go to the French Telecom and part would go to the people who, whose content it, it was. And um, they were hoping that they could earn money like that, somehow like today, uh, from funding. Uh, Nathan, how much time do I have? Because I realize my watch... My dear, my dear, you still have, if you want, 25 minutes. Oh, oh excellent. You are, you have, yeah, and we follow very attentively your 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 presentation. Thanks. Go on, please. Okay, I go on then. Um, yes. So it was a way, as I mentioned, to to think about uh, getting money from the art world directly from the people who were interested in the art, by the artworks. Needless to say, that it failed, and it's interesting to compare that to today's crowdfunding. Uh, which is also a, another model to, to get money directly from the people who are interested. So now I'm going to, to show you our projects and I'll go quicker. And I'm sorry, because my watch really uh, died. So I was following your watch, but it was not working.
So beyond Araxi, Araxi, there were other kind of creations. What I would say independent creation, that is people doing things um, in different contexts. So digital literature um, was something important, uh, was a very important trend. Uh, digital literature and poetry in France was and still is very strong and very in, and very important. And many projects occurred on the Minitel, among which those of a collective called Toi et moi pour toujours, which means you and I forever, which was a collective of young, at that time, young graphic designers. Their names are listed here. And uh, they created uh, several uh, telematic novels. Uh, what was interesting in those novels is that they were developing what, what was named at that time hyperfiction. That is stories that you start, you see here, one, two, three, four, five, six. So you have five different, way, different ways of starting the, the story, and you read the story. Um, from one screen to another, um, depending on which uh, first door you started with. And the story unfolds in an interactive and non-linear way. And that was very important at, at that time. So that was the, uh, the audience could take part somehow into the narrative, chose when to go, which paths to follow. Um, and the, the story, the novel, was not starting page one and ending page Z, but um, was broken fragments uh, that uh, built somehow different stories uh, along, the song, along the line. And there was another very important component that was blending uh, together, as you can see here, uh, the image and the text to create uh, what Françoise Holtz-Bonneau called a text image, where sc um, screen pages displayed the text in such a way that it could also be perceived as an image. Um, think about today, it, it was in, important in the way literature and poetry was reinvented, so to speak. And think about today Twitter novels and story. That is, story and novels uh, or literature built using Twitter and all, all, I don't know, Instagram and all those new uh, platforms to propose uh, storylines. The Minitel uh, was a very hierarchical top-down structure, not designed for horizontal communication among people at all. And it is exactly what uh, Fred Forrest used it for, uh, as you know, Fred. Um, in this uh, first project, which was L'Espace Communicant, created for the, during the exhibition Electra, that took place at the Museum of the City uh, of modern art of the city of Paris in 83. And what Forrest did at that time is that he used 40 telephones and Minitel installed in the museum, as you can see here on the, on the picture. And on site, the public, the public could answer and use the phone and answer what we would call today posts on the Minitel live or with a delay from mailboxes. So what uh, was important for Fred Forest is that uh, the message is the medium. There is no other content than the communication, the connection itself. And in this piece, the museum is used, the Minitel, sorry, is used for its potential of communication among people. Uh, in this virtual uh, meeting space of a global village, where uh, you meet people you don't know, and um, that the question at that time was not where are you, question we use today when we talk on the phone, but who are you? And what is important is that the Minitel in this case was used in conjunction with other media, with a printed 
printed price when where the, um, the phone number was advertised with radio program with telephone uh, regular telephone uh, lines and to create what I call a space in between media that is the way Fred Forrest uh, worked a lot used uh, in, in many of his projects um, used several media combined them together to deple to 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 switch uh, the way each media works and to introduce uh, noise and to in and in such a way that the, that the people look at the media in a different way and reappropriate uh, them. Another work which is uh, from that time in another category of work. What I'm trying to do here is to give you examples of different kind of works uh, that were. Um, Used so, for instance, here uh, the mini tab could be used uh, from home, but more importantly, it is used in the, in the public space of a museum. So it's bringing also what was built as a private device onto into a public space, and this is also somehow what Jean Claude Angland uh, did for this collective creation in and for public space. In the near sub in the suburbs of Paris, in Marne la Vallée, um, which was in kind of new city at that time, there was this water tower um, on which uh, the architect, Christian de Pardzon Park, uh, had put that, that, that grid. And it's a gray building. It was in a suburb. It was rather new. And the idea was how do you create, how do you support uh, a community of people in those places. So what Jean-Claude Anglade proposed was to create a stained glass window uh, for um, the, the, sta the water tower, but using the Minitel to collect uh, the drawings, the abstract drawings um, that the people of, of, of the area, that the inhabitants of the area uh, would um, would propose. The Minitel was of course one way to collect the drawings but not the only one. And and then they were uh, selected and put together on those plastic uh, sheet and put on the uh, on the on the water tower. The Minitel also being a grid, being the grid of the communication but also uh, each screen was uh, is a grid uh, on the Minitel. And the Minitel here was uh, used as a mediation tool for a collective creation in public space for the reappropriation of a urban space by the citizen. And what is interesting is that I think that today uh, probably what we would do is to grow vegetation on the grid to answer the Anthropocene issues rather than uh, do this uh, stained glass uh, window, which lasted for about a, a year, if I remember uh, correctly. More uh, strange, uh, this way to, to use the Minitel by uh, David uh, Boino. He used the Minitel disconnected. So, uh, uh, or, uh, you know, normally you would use it to communicate with other people, but this he, he used it to create light pictures. That is to create photo as a light writer to create images like you see this, and this is a black and white photograph. I mean, a real photograph, which is a rather big format, as you can see here, 97 by 120 centimeters. That was created uh, using the Minitel disconnected from the network, um, because he, he found that the light that was produced by this device was really interesting. And he created uh, photographs, but also uh, installation. And this was taken, this picture, was taken by me two years ago in a studio where you can see that Minitel is still uh, unconnected, of course, but still uh, working. Another thing which is interesting is uh, Marc Donjon. Uh, uh, we use it in public spaces also and as installation. Um, 
So again, I said the Minitel is an indoor private owned device from private use, so to speak. And again, Donjon puts it into public spaces. Um, and he uses the metaphor of a labyrinth and the ma mandala to highlight the nature of that new space that we could later call cyberspace, but at that time it was not the same popular word as it is now. And for instance, here, uh, you have this maze here cre created on the model of the Shark Cathedral. At the center, you have a pedestal with a mini tail on top of it displaying mandalas around you have uh, phones, regular phones, and the audience would have to walk all the way through um, the maze to come here to see um, uh, the labyrinth, to see the, the mandala that were displaced here. And come, come back to what I was saying at the beginning, uh, for Donjon, the Minitel is a terminal that is an end, a door to the network which we, within which sorry, we can enter and navigate. And later we would say surf for the internet. And for him, what was interesting is not that what is at this end, uh, but what happens in between, in between the two ends, in between the the box that is the terminal to access another box that is the server, the computer where the information is, is stored. And for him, um, what is important is what, happen, what happens uh, in, in between. And again, I've reached my conclusion. I'm going to show my face again for the conclusion might be nicer to see me. Uh, yes. Okay. It's so, very well. As a conclusion, um, uh, what I just would like to, to say is that there is not one single category of works with or on the Minitel, nor one kind of aesthetics, as I hope I have showed, uh, showed you. Um, the Minitel was used alone, uh, but also with other media, like uh, with Fred Forrest, or in installation. It can be, uh, the work can be done on the Minitel or sometimes in another medium, not in the same medium like what uh, Jean-Claude Anglade did on the uh, water tower of Marne la Vallée. Um, and through the Minitel, the artist linked various spaces, public and private space, something we're discussing again uh, today with the internet. Outer space, it's a work that I haven't developed, but Jean-Marc Philippe used it to, to collect uh, stories to send to a potential extraterrestrial intelligence, if it exists. Symbolic space, cyberspace, and so on and so forth. So why did the creation was over a, such a short period of time, and why did it stop so early? Because it was very expensive for the, the Minitel Connect was very expensive for the users, so we would pay, you know, several, I mean, an expensive amount of money um, to access those experimental uh, works, uh, not that much, because the cost of production for the artists, it was very difficult to program works for the Minitel. Say. Uh, there was a rigidity, a heaviness, a complexity of a, of a structure that, that was difficult for the artists to access. Moreover, other plot, platform and systems were developing that were more convenient. And I'm thinking here, for instance, uh, for literature uh, that uh, was developing this experimental new media literature was developing over several platforms, over CDs, over um, uh, floppy disks, over computers, in very different formats. And the Minitel was not that easy. Uh, today it's often discussed as a pre-internet uh, system, which is not exactly true for me. Um, it's more of a pre-web uh, system and what is more important is what is that Minitel art is a fully innovative and experimental digital art of its time and the notions of interactivity, connectivity, participatory, nonlinear, combinatory and on 
kind of device that can go into the home. Uh, the issues of public versus private spaces were also discussed and um, explored. And what is interesting today, I uh, put um, media archaeology uh, approach, is that it's a totally dead immaterial artworks. So in other words, uh, there is almost nothing there. Allô, tu m'entends Tu nous entends Programs. Oui Oui, non, parce qu'on a eu un petit problème avec l'image et le son. But please go on. No, it's restored. It's okay. Please. Okay. Um, so, yeah. Um, I'm, I'm going to finish on those last uh, two slides. because it shows you uh, if you have a kind of, of works. Uh, so yeah, today it's, uh, it's dead immaterial artworks and um, things remain here and there and like to, some people try to, long like archaeologists really, try to bring uh, each little bit and for some works we try to recreate the works. It is possible for some, it is not for, for others. Uh, Fred Forest, for instance, that were more actions and performances, of course you cannot really uh, recreate them. And now the question is, what's next? And I'm over. I'm finished. Well, well uh, uh, please, uh, uh, can we see her still? No? You, if you, why? Yes, okay, sir. thank you, all right, very well. So, uh, cher uh, Annick, thank you for saving all those very precious documents and reminding us that in those times, even if we had tools with, with very limited potential, we artists succeeded to create and overcome, overcome those limits. And really, this is very precious for us to realize, while no, particularly the youngsters, have been born in such a fantastic uh, opportunity and tools to communicate, to realize that in those times, imagination and creativity could nevertheless could be... Uh, uh, could, could, could leave us with beautiful things, beautiful documents. So thank you, Annick, and bye-bye uh, in Paris, and bye-bye from Pilsen. Merci beaucoup. Merci, Nathan. Thank you, now. I just want to add something. Thank you, Nathan, for the hard work you are doing, because you have always been uh, a strong... Uh, element and component into our field and you have done a lot of things and you have done so much and always with um, um, you know nicely and warmly and it's always a pleasure to be working with you and I'm really happy to have participated into your your program and I'm very proud to have participated into your program and I hope we'll have some more uh, together uh, in the coming years. Thank Thanks. You. Again. Thank you Annick. Au revoir. Au revoir. Au revoir. Thank you.